I'm excited to draw with you today because we're actually going to draw a little beetle and it is actually called a Colorado potato beetle and I chose it because it's got some really awesome patterns on it and we can break it down into some simple steps. So let's start by drawing our beetle with a big huge upside down rainbow line and again try your very best to follow along and of course we always know if it isn't working out exactly perfectly we're getting our art muscles strong and practicing as we go. So I'm going to start with this big big huge rainbow line upside down and then I'm gently going to curve this top part a little bit in so it's kind of like I made a big huge U. Then I'm going to actually take this shell part of my Colorado potato beetle and come down with a gentle little wiggle just a little bit and come back up. So this is the main part of the beetle's shell. Then I'm going to take this rainbow line and actually start from where I curved and come up and then come back down to the other side. So it's kind of an actual rainbow line this time. And finally, a smaller little line here at the top. So we're kind of stacking these arched shapes on top of each other to make the body and the parts of our beetle. Next, we're going to break the shell in half a little bit with a tiny little U shape and then come down all the way down the middle with a straight line. So this helps us know where the beetle's um, shell would sort of open up and the wings would come out so that our Colorado beetle um, can actually spread its wings and take flight. Next, we're going to make some little stripes. So this is why I like working with a Sharpie or a colored marker because I can actually color in as I go. So I'm gonna start by making a stripe that starts from the bottom on one side, comes up but doesn't touch the top. See how I did a little loop there and then come back down. Now I'm gonna take my Sharpie and just color in that stripe. So I'm gonna do that probably about three times. So I've got one, here's two. Notice how I started with more of a point and then come up rounded and color in that shape and then three. Now, as we know, nature is not always exact. So even when I'm coloring my beetle, if one of my lines end up, ends up a little bit wiggly or a little wavy, of course that is okay because we know that it is helping us to be a little bit more realistic towards what a beetle might actually look like. Specifically, this beetle with its sort of gently curving lines. So now I'm going to the other side because I want to make sure that my beetle's design is symmetrical. And remember, symmetry is when something's the same on both sides, making my beetle symmetrical. Okay, so I'm gonna curve up and finish that last stripe. This one got a little bit to the left and I like that it's different. I'm gonna finish coloring it in. Cool, so now I'm going to just make the designs on this um, sort of top arch of my Colorado potato beetle. So for this one, I've got some gentle sort of raindrop shapes and most of the markings on this beetle are actually going to be black and the beetle itself is going to be yellow. So that's why it's nice to draw with a marker for this step because I can just color in as I go instead of needing to color at the end. So I've made two little sort of raindrops a little bit uneven and then I'm going to make another little patch here kind of like a wiggly little snake. Another little patch here wiggly little snake worm, and then another one up here, just a wiggle. So basically each side of this part has three little markings. So one, two, three, one, two, three, as if I were to continue that um, symmetrical line right there. Okay, now it is time to make my beetle's legs. So we know that insects have six legs. So my beetle has two here, two here, two here, and then two long antennas at the top, which of course are not legs, but are different, and we need to make sure we make space for those. So to make the legs, we're gonna break it down into a few simple shapes. I'm gonna come away from the body with a little bit of, I guess I would call that kind of a teardrop shape, or a U, or almost like the end of a paper clip. So let's make one on each side, and then a skinnier little teardrop, boop, like this, because oftentimes the legs are in segments, meaning they're broken apart where they can kind of move and, and bend. And then there are some little joints here at the bottom, but I'm actually gonna just make a curly line. So a curly pigtail line close to each other like this, and then I stop. Curly pigtail, and then I stop. And then it's got this really cool kind of hook on the bottom. So I come out like a little banana shape and come back in. So those are the two legs, and I'm actually going to do that four more times, but they're in facing in different directions. So the next one comes up about halfway up the body, again, making that little paperclip edge first. 
making that skinny little teardrop next. And then making those kind of curly cues. So swirl, 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 swirl for a little bit where that joint is gonna come out. Swirl, 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 swirl. And then give it that little hook so that beetle can chop on a leaf. And my hook. Good, and then the last part, the legs actually face up this way. So I'm gonna make the legs come the opposite direction. So instead of my little paperclip edge going this way, I'm gonna make it come up the top. And this happens right at this little corner edge of my beetle's shell. So I'm gonna make that little edge, ooh, that one got a little bit big, but that's okay. And then um, I'm going to now do my little swirly just connected. Swirl, swirl, swirl. And as you make a swirl that's connected, it kind of ends up looking like a bunch of segments together, which is why it's a neat little trick to just do that part kind of quickly. So I'm gonna do my swirlies. And then my little arch here at the top. So my beetle's got six legs. The last thing I need to add is the antennas. So again, I'm gonna make a little itty bitty little U shape this time, tiny, tiny. And then I get to make the antenna, which is made of a bunch of little curly wiggly segments. So again, I'm going to do this one as like a itty bitty little curly pigtail. And then near the end, get a little bit bigger. Wah, just like that. Okay, so curly, 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 so tiny, so tiny, so tiny. And then when I get near the end, a little bit bigger and stop. Now I've got two antennas for my Colorado potato beetle. I've got six total legs and a really awesome pattern shell. Now it's time for me to color. And the coloration for this beetle is mostly yellow. So if you have yellow colors, you can of course follow along or you could decide that you wanna change it and turn it into your own design. So I'm gonna be coloring the shell light yellow. This top part here is gonna be a little bit more of a darker mustardy yellow and then the legs are gonna follow along in that darker design too. And again, if you wanna keep track of what kind of beetle it is, this one is called a Colorado Potato beetle, potato beetle. You don't need to write yours on it, but you can if you want to. All right, my friends, it is time to color. artists i hope you had fun drawing your colorado potato beetle remember you can always create your own designs if you want to invent a beetle that is created by you my friends please remember you are amazing you are strong you are resilient and i love you we'll see you next time